10 most amazing recent archaeological finds that scientists have yet to study. Will these finds be able to change our history and understanding of our ancestors? Watch the video until the end. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. Wooden figurine of Chima culture Archaeologists, during excavations at the site of Wakatakanamo, which is attributed to the Chemo culture, discovered a perfectly preserved wooden figurine. This artifact, measuring 47 by 16 centimeters, depicts an anthropomorphic character with a face painted red. According to scientists, the discovered product emphasizes the ritual function of the object where it was found. In the 9th 15th centuries AD, the Chemo culture flourished on the northern coast of Peru. It was formed in the valley of the Moche River on the basis of the Machica culture. Late Chemo monuments are identified with the taste of Chemo, founded by Takanamo at the beginning of the 13th century and conquered by the Incas around 1470. The figure has a flat, oval-shaped face painted red, as well as a protruding nose. Inside the almond-shaped eyes, as well as the ears, the researchers found the remains of black resin, which may have been used to attach mother-of-pearl plates. On the head of this figure is a trapezoidal headdress, decorated with seven alternating light and dark vertical stripes. The left arm of the anthropomorphic character is bent at the elbow and pressed to the body, while the right arm is extended along it. On the figure's belt is a loincloth or some analog of a triangular skirt. It seems that originally the torso and arms were also painted red. According to researchers, the discovered figurine confirms the ritual function of the structure where it was found. One of the oldest mosques in the world Israeli archaeologists have discovered a rare ancient mosque in the country south that experts say sheds light on the region's transition from Christianity to Islam. The remains of the mosque, believed to be over 1,200 years old, were discovered during construction work on a new quarter in the Bedouin town of Farhat. The mosque, located in the Negev Desert, consists of a square room and a wall facing Mecca, with a semicircular niche in that wall pointing south. These unique architectural features show that the building was used as a mosque. Not far from the mosque, a luxurious estate was also found with the remains of dishes and glass artifacts, indicating the wealth of its inhabitants. Three years ago, authorities excavated nearby another mosque from the same era dating from the 7th to 8th centuries AD, calling the two Islamic temples among the earliest known in the entire world. Mosques, estates and other houses found nearby illuminate the historical process that took place in the northern Negev with the emergence of a new religion, the religion of Islam, as well as the new rule and culture in the region. Two Mysterious Holes Known scientifically as SK-54, this skull has given a team of paleontologists at the University of Johannesburg numerous headaches due to mysterious holes that are visible on its surface. This skull belongs to a young Paranthropus solidus, Australopithecus solidus, which lived on the lands of South Africa a little over one and a half million years ago. The first clue to the puzzle came from other remains found in the same Stokefontein cave. The hominids that the researchers believe they belong to were killed elsewhere, after which the attacker took them to his lair. The second clue was the diameter of the holes and the distance between them. Paleozoologists helped in the study. They found the alleged culprit, the panther Pardus begoni, the ancestor of our leopard. This they confirmed using various fossilized skulls of these animals and even analyzing the trajectories and pressure points of carrying leopard bites. Australopithecus from the Cradle of Humankind Archaeologists have clarified the age of Australopithecus, the fossilized remains of which were found at the Stokefontein site. 
cosmogenic dating has showed that South African individuals lived 3.4, 3.7 million years ago, and not 2, 2.6 million years ago as previously thought. The revised age makes the South African hominins contemporaneous with the Alpha and some other Middle Pliocene Australopithecines. On the territory of the Republic of South Africa, not far from Johannesburg, there is a complex of monuments called the Cradle of Humankind, which is included in the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. On an area of about 474 square kilometers, there are many limestone caves that are rich in fossil remains. Fossilized remains were found in this place, in particular, African Australopithecus, Australopithecus sediba, Paranthropus, Handyman, Iceman, and some other hominine species. The excavations yielded a huge collection of finds. By the end of the 20th century, more than 300 fossils were known that belonged to African and massive Australopithecus, early Homo. The most famous among these finds is the STS-5 Australopithecus skull, found back in 1947, and known as Mrs. Pless. Unlike most East African sites of such antiquity, it is difficult to date the finds from Sturk Fontaine, because it does not contain volcanic deposits that can be dated with reliable physical methods. After conducting a huge number of analyses, archaeologists concluded that all the fossilized remains of Australopithecus found in Sturk Fontaine date back to about 3.7, 3.4 million years ago. In South Africa, the Australopithecus of Sturk Fontaine lived about a million years before Paranthropus, early Homo, and Sediba Australopithecus. Network of 3,000-year-old tunnels Thousands of years ago, in the Andes on the territory of today's Peru, there was an ancient Chavin people who left behind a temple complex in Chavin de Huenta, under which a huge network of tunnels and galleries was discovered not so long ago. Archaeologists from Stanford University are sure that the hidden rooms were used for religious rituals. As the lead author of the new study, John Rick, noted, some of the dark, isolated rooms could be used for something like sensory deprivation. The larger galleries, however, were clearly places for religious ceremonies. Archaeologists have clarified that the hidden rooms in question cannot be considered tunnels in the literal sense, because they are not dug into the ground, but are built inside a large temple complex, which was built in several stages between 1200 BC and 200 AD. The passages remained hidden from outsiders for 3,000 years. It took scientists 15 years of excavation to discover 36 galleries connected by tunnels. The study of this archaeological site continues, so new significant discoveries are ahead of the researchers. Ancient Zigzag Object Chinese archaeologists have studied the historical monument of Weidian and found traces of ritual sacrifices from the early stage of the Chia dynasty. According to CGTN, an unusual ceremonial structure stands out among the finds. Weidian is a famous ancient site in Yuzhou, in the central Chinese province of Henan. There is a large sacred complex here, which is believed to have been erected around 2 millennia BC. Then, about 4,000 years ago, the Chia dynasty ruled in China, the capital of which was the city of Weidian. Archaeologists have discovered an unusual ancient structure, a zigzag object that is 31 meters long and 26 meters wide. The area of the strange structure is approximately 800 square meters. At the base of the unique object, traces of rich sacrifices were found, for example, the skeletons of various animals, as well as shells of mollusks. It is assumed that these are the remains of grandiose feasts that were held here as an element of ritual ceremonies. Scientists hope to make new discoveries at the Wadian site, which will help to understand the history of this place. Finds with traces of teeth of medieval shoemakers in modern Rezan in Russia, during excavations, many pieces of shoe leather with bites were found, which are several centuries old. One of the notable finds is the top of a boot, which was used as a gag. 
Here, on the southeastern section of the Kremlin, in the 15th-16th centuries, there was a shoemaker's shop. When processing the finds, experts noticed that many fragments of the skin retain traces of human teeth. These imprints are most clearly seen immediately after the removal of the skin from the wet cultural layer, and later, upon drying, the traces disappeared. But if the skin was moistened, then they show through again. These traces were found on a variety of leather fragments, on cut pieces, on shoe parts, on household items, and even on the so-called planta thick leather. They were different, clear and weak, located in a single semicircular group or several groups, and sometimes overlapped and even merged with each other. Archaeologists examined the prints under a microscope at optical magnification up to 40 times. By the nature of the prints, it became clear that the artisans left them when working with the skin. With the help of their own teeth, they held the blanks, scraped, stretched, and even chewed the skin to soften it a little. Found traces of teeth of people of different ages. The teeth of the inhabitants of the medieval Tereyaslav Rozanski were relatively even. Malocclusion was found on four prints out of 16 studied in detail. One notable find is the shaft of a leather boot, which, judging by the teeth marks, was used as a gag. Mummy of a paralyzed after a stroke woman. Scientists, using an X-ray machine, examined an ancient Egyptian mummy, buried with a crutch, and found that it belonged to a woman who died at the age of 25-40. Her skeletal pathologies indicated that she had suffered a stroke that resulted in paralysis on the left side of her body. According to the researchers, the red shroud of this 2,700-year-old mummy emphasizes the woman's high social status. The development of paleoradiology, that is, the study of bioarchaeological materials using modern imaging methods, radiography, computed tomography, and magnetic resonance imaging, three-dimensional reconstruction, and some other technologies introduced into medical practice at the end of the 20th century, allowed scientists to make significant progress in the study of mummified remains. In recent years, a large number of studies of Egyptian mummies have appeared using paleoradiological methods. This allowed us to take a fresh look at the evolution of a wide range of infectious and vascular diseases, as well as tumors. For example, a recent study showed that 29 out of 76 ancient Egyptians studied suffered from atherosclerosis. In addition, paleopathologies have found evidence of widespread tuberculosis in ancient Egypt, including among children, as well as malaria. Scientists noted that the mummy attracted attention with its red linen shroud, which covered her head and body. The remains belong to a woman who died at the age of 2540. The researchers drew attention to the fact that her right arm was extended along the body, while the left was bent and pressed to her chest, and the hand was twisted. In addition, the woman's head was facing down, and the position of the left tibula indicated that the foot was turned inward. The bones of the feet themselves are missing. The woman suffered from damage to the right hemisphere of the brain. Apparently, after the age of 23-25, she suffered a stroke, which led to paralysis of the left side of her body. However, she lived with this for a long period. This is indicated by the difference in the thickness of the cortical bone. According to scientists, this is the oldest recorded case of stroke described in the paleopathological literature. Remains of white and red wine Chemists and paleobotanists conducted a study of the contents of three Roman anthras found on the seabed of the coast of Lazio. Inside these vessels, they found the remains of resin extracted from pine trees, pollen, and plant tissues, including the remains of grapes. Analysis showed that wine was stored in anthrae, two of which were white and one was red. In the era of antiquity, the leading role in the Mediterranean trade was played by the transport of grain, olive oil, and wine. For the storage and transportation of these goods, anthras were used, usually clay vessels with an expanded upper and narrower lower part of the body, a narrow neck, and two handles. The manufacture of amphorae was of mass nature, and each production center followed a certain standard of shape and volume. By the shape and size, one can usually judge what kind of product the amphora was intended for. 
for example pot bellied for olive oil and narrower and taller for wine. The inner surface of the latter was sometimes covered with resin. Resin, like clay with lime, was also used to seal the throat. A group of scientists from Italy and France, led by Donatella Macri from the University of La Sapienza in Rome, examined three ancient Roman amphoras found in 2018 on the seabed near the modern harbor of the Italian commune of San Felice Sursio. From the bottom and inner walls of all three amphoras, scientists took samples of organic materials for chemical research using gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, as well as paleobotanical analysis. As a result of the analysis, chemists found out that inside the amphoras there was a resin obtained from pine trees. All samples also contained tartaric, malic, and pyruvic acids, and one amphora also contained syringic acid. In addition, in the resin, scientists also found acid esters obtained from acids and alcohol. Chemical analysis indicated that the SFC1 amphora contained red wine, while the SFC2 and SFC5 contained white wine. Dead turtle with egg in Pompeii the general public is used to the fact that if archaeologists find the remains of living creatures during excavations in Pompeii, then they are usually associated with the catastrophic eruption of Vesuvius in 79. It was then that Pompeii itself and other small cities in the vicinity of the volcano perished, and the surviving people moved to the big cities of Campania, for example Naples and Capua. However, the new find refers to a different period of the city's existence, the years between two natural disasters. In 62, an earthquake occurred in the Italian Campania. It was quite serious, although tremors for Campania are not such a rare occurrence. After this earthquake, Pompeii found itself in a rather difficult situation. Both private houses and public buildings were damaged. Moreover, some were so destroyed that they had to be dismantled, freeing the land for new construction. Excavations were carried out in a shop almost next to the main entrance to the bath. This site was also badly damaged during the earthquake and for some time stood abandoned. It was during this period that the turtle, playing to lay an egg, found refuge in it. However, for some reason, this shelter did not suit her. And I must say that reptiles, including turtles, are able to delay the laying of eggs. This reaction of the reptile's body to stress, the lack of a comfortable nest or danger, is called dystocia. Experts at the Pompeii Archaeological Park believe that it was dystocia that prevented the turtle from successfully laying an egg, and she died with it inside. By the way, this turtle is not the only turtle found in Pompeii, but usually their remains were found in gardens or rich houses where they could live like pets, and they didn't have any eggs. Read this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, and everyone who writes a kind comment under the video will receive a fat like from me. Thanks for the views! Bye everyone!